Kennedy said that the Malangan complex was obtained from females but transferred over to males through ceremonial creativity. This is reflected in the origin myth of the origin of Malangan. In the time of our great-great-grandfathers, there was no such traditional ceremonies as Malangan or Kabai or Lukara. There was no such things as Malangan cabins, feasts, sing-sings and the traditional amlets. These practices came about when a spirit woman handed down all her wisdom to a woman. Yes, a woman was the original custodian of the practices of Malangan. Once upon a time, there lived a middle-aged woman by the name of Kenibu. She was a good, humid woman from a powerful clan called Minim Tawapa, a friend to all and enemy to none. She lived in a village called Lawatpura, a little, tidy, idyllic village on a relaxing beach. Adjacent to the village flows the tranquil river through the mangrove swamp into the sea. The hamlet of Lawatpura sandwiched between neighboring Nautili villages of Rangalis and Pinikidu and the Sautili village of Katedan. They are components of the vibrant tribal groupings of Madak. In Lawatpura, Kenibu's favorite hobby was gardening. It also became familiar with her daily routine to return home very late to the village after working. She relished walking back home alone, preaching to the trees, the birds, the grass, the wind, the water in the creek as it trickled on its way, the frogs, grasshoppers, and anything she could set eyes upon. Kenibu felt that these creations adored her friendship from the indications of the birds flying down close to her and chirp different melodies. At the time, one particular female spirit has taken note of her routine and waited for the right moment to talk to her. She was Wawara and she was looking for the right person to take ownership of the powerful and mysterious secrets she controlled. Wawara whispered to herself, Yes, she is going to be my choice. One fine day, Kenibu toiled in her garden and as the sun was setting, she organized to go home. She felt an air of expectations but resigned to forgo the feelings. It was like a dream with no results. That's what she thought. The air of expectation was still lingering in her mind even though she tried hard to decline it. She walked home carrying with her the necessary food for the evening. It felt humid and oppressing, saturated with heat and moisture. By then dark clouds had already formed above the top of the mighty Schlein's range that separates the eastern from the western seaboard. She looked back and momentarily caught a glimpse of the dark clouds but it never bothered her. This was taken for granted that nature was doing its usual task. Kenibu kept walking along and slowly went into deep thoughts over some critical unsettled family matters. The mountains that ranged the horizon had turned grey. Then it swiftly changed to cloudy and finally black. The cicadas chirped their rouses harmony, much to the delight of the woman. This sudden torrential neatly taken her off guard. Surprisingly, she came upon a safe haven under a huge banana tree, but the unrelenting downpour continued. Her eyes felt drowsy and she sat down. Kenubu was not scared of anything, but her body felt so weak. She did not have the strength to walk any further. For a moment, Kenubu felt dizzy. The air began to waver and she fell into a deep sleep. As she dozed off, the imaginations swam in and out of her mind. If anything was shown in her mind that afternoon, it would be the images of the Malangan cabins, feasts and sing-sings shown to her by a female spirit. Now the female spirit descended to where she was sleeping and communicated to her. Kenibu, my name is Wawara. I have chosen you to receive the things I am going to tell you now. Because of your strict discipline in the way you live and your respect for others, I am going to tell you all these things and you will pass them on to the men of your village to implement them. The things that I am going to tell you about are known as Malaka. They can also be called Kabai or Lukara. Now look this way. They involve processes that are very intricate and complicated. See these images? They are called Malangan carvings. They are images that would play a vital role between the living and the dead. 
so as to strictly understand. They are images which are displayed to portray the dead person. They are cut from a tree and cut this way. These are the different types of trees for the carving. The sabab, milky pine tree, erima and other soft wood trees are easy to carve the malagan images. Hardwoods are not suitable because their grains are so confused and will slit the carving. Feast must be held in these sequences. After the burial, the first feast is to be held to farewell the person. Several months later, another feast to burn all his personal belongings or destroy what he had planted. The third and final feast, which is going to be the biggest, is the Malangan, Feast of the Dead. It means picking up the energy from the dead members of the clan, channeling it and sharing it out among members of the clan. This is to strengthen the bonds between those that take the place of the dead man and the rest of the community. Wawara departed from Kenibu. She started giggling and then woke up and sat back. Amazing bright tears clung in her eyes as she looked so confused and thought what had happened. Why were these objects shown to me? I am only a woman. Very carefully, she thought over and over about what had been told to her. She walked slowly down to the village and Wawara hovered behind her. Kenibu went to see her Mimin and recited to her the whole process, the practices of mortuary feast, the mace, the pig, carvings, sing-sings, and the traditional amulets. Her Mimin told the village man about what had been told to Kenibu. They came to see Kenibu to confirm if what her Mimin had told them were true. At first, she spoke to confirm what her Mimin had told them. But not long after, she started to have difficulties in speaking properly. Then her memories of what had happened had gone. It was very clear now that the powerful spirit of Wawara had possessed her. Gradually, it was apparent now that Wawara was claiming her life too. Kenibu tried to call out to her Mimin, but her voice, like water overflowing in her throat, astonished at the muteness but insisted she forced her eyes to search Bora in the darkness once more. She lurched through the dark nights betrayed and forsaken. Kenobu's chattering teeth chopped her words, barely audible, and a door flew open and streaming in through the dim light were black shapes like hosts of Bora. Don't take me! She shrieked as she thrashed out against them, trying to talk but they gently pinned her down. The village men tried to cure her, but no one succeeded. They requested refutable medicine men from Nali, Natsi, Manda, Baro, and Patpata, but to no avail. Only one fateful morning, sadly to say, but Kenugu was found to have hung herself. She had made contact with the spirit of Wawara and was still intensely possessed. The people of Lawatbura and the neighboring villages mourned her death. Her Mimin and members of her clan carried out the first Malangan death feast ceremony in her honor. The complex process was strictly followed and became the first successful Malangan ceremony to be held in the island. That was the whole the region of Malangan came to be. Niwalan bilas pinesoy